Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to look at a very interesting video as I am going to present you my list of the 10 best NBA players in 2020. The players are ranked based on their statistics, team impact or capacity to win as well as their skill and talent or dominance. Also, don't forget this is a subjective ranking, but feel free to give your own top 10 in the comment section. With that being said, let's start at number 10 with Nikola Jokic, who is in my opinion the best center in the NBA. The Joker is one of the best passers in the league. He can post up players down low. He got some interesting ball handling and shooting skills. And he is also in the top 10 of the most clutch players in the NBA right now. With the help of Jama Murray, Jokic and the Nuggets were able to reach the conference finals, despite being down 3-1 in each of the two previous series. They were also able to finish as a top 3 seeded team in the West for those past two seasons. At number 9 we have Luka Doncic, a young phenom with a huge amount of potential. In just his second season in the league, Luka averaged roughly 29 points per game, along with 9.4 rebounds and nearly 9 assists. He had a 52 effective field goal percentage and a 58 true shooting percentage, while also leading the Mavericks way above expectations. Continuing the list we got Damian Lillard, and there's no doubt Dame is a very skilled player. He is the most consistent deep 3 point shooter in the NBA alongside Stephen Curry. His quickness and acceleration allows him to blow by past defenders. He got good tight handles. And he's a good rim finisher. Lillard also provides a lot of playmaking for the Blazers and he's arguably the most clutch player in the NBA. Dean just had a fantastic individual season, averaging 30 points and 8 assists, while having a 56 effective full goal percentage and a 62 true shooting percentage. Although the Portland Trailblazers only barely made the playoffs, the collective results were there in 2019, as they finished third in the West while making the conference finals. At number 7, we have James Harden. Throughout the years, the Beard became an unguardable player. He has won the past 3 straight scoring titles, finishing the MVP conversation each time. Harden is also the reason the Rockets were a relevant team those past few years, but the reasons I do not have him higher are because he is probably a worse defender than all the players ahead of him, and also because his past 2 postseasons were pretty disappointing. Following Harden, we got Anthony Davis. The Unibrow is a talented player and in my opinion the most skilled big man in the league. He is a pretty good ball handler and passer for his position. He's great at grabbing offensive rebounds. He is dangerous from mid range and from three. Davis is also one of the best lob finishers of all time. On top of all of that, he's an elite defender. AD just strongly helped the Lakers win their 17th championship in franchise history, so he could definitely rank higher. The problems though are that he's too inconsistent and that he couldn't quite carry his own team in New Orleans. We enter the top 5 with Kevin Durant. I might be doing a big mistake ranking him this low, because when healthy, Durant is arguably the best player on the planet. Throughout his career, KD has established himself as one of the most unstoppable offensive weapons ever, with him being a 6'10 or 6'11 small forward that can shoot and handle the ball like a guard. Last time he was fully healthy, Durant also won back-to-back -back finals MVPs. The main problem is of course his injury. Now, I do believe he is going to come back playing well, with his game relying more on skill than athleticism. But so, depending on how well he plays for the Nets next season, it will definitely affect his ranking in 2021. At number 4, we have Giannis Antetokounmpo. 
The Greek freak has been heavily criticized after surprisingly being defeated in the second round of the playoffs. On the other end, I feel like people now actually underestimate Yanis and do not realize how good he truly is. Although Yanis' skills are still developing, he is already very dominant because of his insane athleticism. Yanis has won back-to-back -back MVPs and was just named the 2020 Defensive Player of the Year. This season, Giannis roughly averaged 30 points, 14 rebounds and 6 assists per game on his 61 true shooting percentage, although he only played 30 minutes per game. He led the Bucks to the best record in the NBA for those past two seasons and he was able to reach the conference finals in 2019. This year, Giannis Antetokounmpo had the highest player efficiency rating, also known as PER, in league history, and the ninth highest box plus minus season ever. This season, Giannis also led the league in defensive rating, defensive box plus minus, defensive win shares, and defensive rebounds. After the Bucks' disappointing 2020 playoffs, I am sure the Greek freak will be more motivated than ever to reach the NBA Finals. So I wouldn't even be surprised if he wins his third MVP award next year. Entering the top 3, we find Kawhi Leonard. Just like Giannis, the claw has probably dropped a few spots in most people's top 10 after the Clippers shockingly blew a 3-1 lead. But Kawhi remains an elite player on both ends of the floor that can score on all three levels. He is a great defender and one of the best mid-range shooters in the NBA. Leonard has also improved as a passer too. You also need to take into account that he did have a great playoff run in 2019, leading the Toronto Raptors to the NBA Championship as well as being rewarded with the Finals MVP trophy. At number 2 we have Stephen Curry. I'm sure some people will be surprised to see him rank this high, but let me explain my choice. Curry was injured for most of the season and even in the few games he did play, he didn't look that great. But we need to take into consideration that he now had a lot of time to rest. And as Curry will be motivated to prove that the worst dynasty is not over yet, I think we can expect another MVP caliber season from him. And if you look at how he was playing the previous season, he absolutely deserves to be here. In 2019, Curry provided massive scoring on a great efficiency. And outside of his individual accomplishments, the Warriors can count on his insane gravity that attracts the defense towards him and creates for others. So now that you covered up some analytics aspects of Stephen Curry, let's look at why he absolutely deserves to be here also based on skills. First of all, Steph is undoubtedly the greatest shooter of all time, but he is also an elite ball handler and a very good finisher. Babyface has a great off-ball movement. He is a good passer. And he is arguably clutch, although that is very debatable. Some people criticize Curry for not being a great defender, but the truth is that he isn't even a liability on that end of the floor, as impact metrics still view him as a positive on defense. And the last reason I have Curry at number 2 is because he's the superstar with the biggest team impact outside of possibly the player ranking ahead of him. During the 2018-19 season, with Curry on the floor, the Warriors had the best offensive rating with a star player in the whole league. There are also many other stats that show just how valuable Curry has been to his team over the last couple of years. I won't explain them in detail, although I am leaving you in the description a link to a video made by famous YouTuber Jimmy Highroller about Steph Curry's team impact. And finally, at number 1 we have the King LeBron James. After his slightly disappointing season in 2019, LeBron has redeemed himself and proved he was still the best player in the world, which is really impressive considering he's been in the league for 17 years and that just shows how great his longevity is. LeBron's game is a great mix between skill and athleticism, he's possibly the most complete player of all time and he also has a huge team impact. This season, LeBron led the league in assists with 10.2 dimes per game. He also finished second in MVP voting, led the Lakers to the NBA championship and won his fourth finals MVP of his career. Well, that's it for this video. Please tell me what you think about my top 10 in the comment section. And as usual, don't forget to like, subscribe and activate the notification bell.